Man, we got so much to talk about in this video. I'm a little bit late to the party. I'm a day late on my reaction video. I apologize about that, guys. I was away on a retreat, so I wasn't able to be fully tuned into, into this card. Um, and I actually missed the main event when it happened. I had to like get it spoiled for me afterwards, which was really annoying. But I just finished watching the whole fight of the main event a day later. Um, but UFC 308, man, it lived up to the hype. I mean, from the main card opener, um, all the way to the main event and the prelims, I only saw the, um, I missed the headliner of the prelims, but I knew this was going to be a banger. You got a first round KO from the newcomer, Jeff Neal knocks out Dos Anjos in the first, like, even though Dos Anjos got injured, um, he was going to lose that fight either way. He was already getting pieced up and busted up and taken down. Like he wasn't winning that fight. His knee popping in the middle of the fight was a blessing in disguise, but I got my prediction, right? Um, I didn't really do good for predictions like on the prelims. Um, let's see. I could probably pull up my topology picks in this video, but I don't know. It just might be time consuming. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to randomly pull up another tab and try to search up my picks on Tapology. But I know I picked Renat. I got that right. I think I picked against Bruno Silva. I picked against him, yeah. And I picked uh, Farid Basharat. But I picked Chris Barnett um, on Tapology. And I picked Bruno Ferreira because I didn't trust Abbas Magomedov because he's got terrible cardio. And I mean... Last year he went, I don't know if he went 0-2, but he lost to Strickland. And then after the Strickland fight, he not, he lost another fight from gassing out. So I thought the same would happen again, but nope. He subs Bruno Ferreira. I missed this fight. Um, but again, this card lived up to the hype. I mean, the prelims had, let's see how many finishes. Like about four. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So four finishes, let's see, one, two, three, four. So four finishes, four decisions on the prelim. So pretty decent. Um, hey, I'm never going to a retreat in the middle of a pay-per-view ever again. Lesson learned. I did that last year, but last year it worked in my favor at UFC 294 because the way the whole event was organized during free time, free time was longer and I had more time to watch everything and also the pay-per-view went by a lot quicker because there was like a lot of fast finishes to start out um the pay-per-view and even the main event last year like ended in the first round um but yeah this year yeah, I just wasn't working unfortunately but let's get into these fights I'll get to the main event at the end of this video which I'm very sad about as a Max Holloway fan um but Shara Magomedov um versus Armin Petrosian I picked this one correctly I said that Sharamaga Medoff would probably win by catching him somewhere like in a competitive fight. I said he'd probably knock him out in my prediction video, I'm sure. And I said Armin's been defeated in every which way possible, decision, submission, and knockout. So I thought it's not out of the realm of possibility for Sharamaga Medoff, who does have power to knock out Armin Petrosian. But Armin was being tested. Like for those who were picking Armin, or sorry, Shara was being tested. And for those who did pick um, Armin to win the fight, you weren't really wrong. It was a good pick based off how the fight was going. But like I said, these Dagestanis, they got plot, plot armor. It's like they're always destined to win these like unranked fights. And like I said, Shara Magomedov is not losing until he fights someone in the rankings. Dan Ige versus Lerone Murphy. That was a pretty good fight. Um, man, I was kind of disappointed in Dan Ige. I was rooting for him because he had a big first round. He dropped Lerone Murphy um, towards the end, but Lerone was able to survive. And I think Lerone wins the second round by outstriking Ige. Um, and then the third round, I thought Ige could have won that, but he slowed down a little bit, which is kind of out of it character for Dan Ige's standards usually Dan Ige like doesn't get tired in fights but this time he actually slowed down and even though he had a lot of control in round three it didn't matter Let's how many takedowns does this guy get Hold on, let me move my let me move my sc uh, wrong one let me move my screen aside okay he had like one takedowns out of three attempts but 
I guess the other times he ended up on top was like through scrambles or defending takedowns of Larone. Because Larone did shoot like, I think he shot like five takedowns in total and got three. He got three takedowns actually, but I guess the two that got stuffed is when he ended up on bottom. I should probably rewatch that fight, but I don't. I kind of know. I mean, it was a good fight. I just you know it. I could rewatch it actually. It just doesn't feel worth it. Not because it was a boring fight. But because the profile, it was a low profile matchup that I wasn't that hyped for. So it's like, I don't know if I want to watch it back. But I'm getting off track. Ige loses round three. I mean, watching it live, I thought he could have won because he had a lot of control time. But Larone did more damage. When Larone got up, he was tagging Ige with some solid elbows. So, you know what? It was it was a correct decision. And even with total and significant strikes, Larone has the edge and more takedowns. Thought it would be a split decision, but like Max Holloway says, who I'm going to get into later, it is what it is. Um, and then Ankalaev, Rakic, I'm relieved for the outcome of this fight, man. I was worried. I wanted, and I mean I wanted Magomed to win this fight because he deserved to be fighting for the title. He got screwed over. The UFC wrongfully matched him up with Rakic, which on paper was a risky matchup. Because, you know, Rakic, kickboxer with good takedown defense, very physically strong. Um, and Magomed has wrestling in his game. And the whole consensus was going into this fight is that Magomed would struggle on the feet. Which, you know, he didn't really. In the first round, it was like a bit of a boring feeling out process. Where Rakic was attempting some high kicks that were blocked. Landed a few... Um, glancing leg kicks, nothing major, nothing too impactful, but round two happens, and Magomed Ankalai puts his foot on the gas like Yuri did, but because he's not built like Yuri, he couldn't finish Rakic, which I was correct about this fight. I said I was wrong about it being a close decision. I thought it was very clear that Ankh won, but I was right in the sense that he's not chinning Rakic because he doesn't have that Prohaska power. And Rakic did take shots from Wachowicz. And we know how powerful Blachowicz is. And I think Jan is more powerful and a better striker and a more accurate boxer um, than Ankalaev. And he couldn't knock out Rakic. I mean, Rakic's knee died on him in the middle of the fight, but he couldn't finish him with the hand. So I'm like, all right. Rakic will survive, but I reckoned he was going to get outboxed and that Magabe would be a little bit faster, which he was. So Ankh wins a fair 29-28 decision. Arguably could be 30-27, but I'm glad he got this out of the way. And his title shot with Poetan is secured, I hope. I mean, the fight wasn't that entertaining, but come on. He's beaten almost everyone in the top 10 now, I think. He's on a long win streak, has not lost since 2018. Ankh Alive is long overdue. He had that close championship fight with the former champion in Jan Blachowicz where, I don't know, man, if if the other judge who had it 47-47 would have had it 48-47 Ankh Alive, he would have been the champion. So he was one scorecard away from being the champion if the other judge didn't make it a draw and instead gave it to Magomed Ankh Alive, which is insane. And because of that, because of how well he did against Jan, I've been itching to see him back in there for the belt. And now that Poetan is the champion, hate Ankh all you want. Who doesn't want to see Alex Pereira versus Magomed Ankh Alive? That is a great fight. I think Ankh is clearly one of the best light heavyweights in the world. I don't know if he's the second best because he hasn't fought Yuri yet. And I don't know if he beats Yuri. Um, I'm sure he probably beats Jamal Hill. But that's a dangerous fight. I think Hill's better than Rockage by far. Um, but, you know, he's proven himself to be one of the best. And he could be the second best to Pereira. And we know Pereira is the best. He's, like, cleaning out his division. And I think Ankh is, like, the last biggest test, the last interesting fight, the last good challenge for Pereira in this division. Like, if Ankh would have lost this fight, then Pereira would just have to go to, to light head or to heavyweight. Like, who wants to see Alexander Rakic in his boring style where he just jabs, leg kicks, and runs against Alex Pereira? I know I might, I might be sounding like a hypocrite because I'm an Adesanya fan, Adesanya kind of does the same thing, but Adesanya, when he fights like that, he's at least doing something. He's at least being effective while being boring and scoring points. Rakic gets all timid and defensive, and it costs him, like it costed him this fight. So 
yeah, I would not have wanted to see him fight um, Politon because it would have been a lock that he would have got starched within the first two rounds. I think the MMA math would have mathed in that one because Yuri beat Rakic, who, you know, lost to Alex twice. And Alex would have just done worse to Rakic. Whereas Ankh, there's the threat of the wrestling. I know Ankh doesn't wrestle a lot, but he could. He could wrestle. And if he leans to it, he could dominate Alex. And I hope he wrestles because I want to see the extent to which how much Pereira has improved his defensive wrestling. If Polton goes out there, stuffs every takedown of Uncle Laev, and then knocks him out, I'm going to be impressed. And I'm not doubting he could, but that's the thing. I want to see that fight because I want to find out. And if Polton beats Magomed, then go to heavyweight and fight Aspinall. Or fight John Jones if John doesn't leave after beating Stipe. But John's got to beat Tom first. We all want to see that fight. Um... Moving on, though, into the co-main event, Robert Whitaker versus Kamzat Chimaev. My prediction was on the money. This fight went exactly how I thought it was and I was how I thought it would. And I was so nervous for this fight, okay, and my prediction, because I felt I was taking a big risk by saying that Kamzat's going to go out there, blitz Whitaker in the first, get an easy takedown and sub him within the first, I thought, man, this is a risky pick because he couldn't do that to Burns or Usman, who were like other two high-level opponents he had. Um, and I thought Robert's better than both of them. So is he really going to be able to get Whitaker out of there early? And if he doesn't, I did say if Robert can survive round one and then he's able to settle into the fight, he's going to win the fight. But I said I have a feeling that Kamza is going to go out there and finish Robert before Robert even had a chance to show anything. And was I wrong? I said he'd go out there and get a quick takedown on Whitaker. And I said Whitaker would defend the initial shot. Like Kamzat was on the ankles. The cage saved Whitaker from falling on his back. But then Whitaker hunches over. And what did I say would happen? I said Kamzat would go to the back of Robert. Drag him on his hands and knees. And that Robert was going to fight like hell. To stay on his feet. And to not get finished on the ground. But I said inevitably Chimai was going to get him in his sub. Now, I was off by the sub because I did say that it would be a darsh choke. I did stupidly think Robert could break the grip. But I thought just because he breaks the grip from the rear body lock, I didn't think he was escaping. I just thought, okay, Kamza is just going to get to the head, the front head lock and find a choke in that position. But I did say that Chimaev could rear naked choke Bobby Knuckles because I pointed out Yoel Romero was able to get to Whitaker's back several times, but he has no submissions, whereas Chimaev does. Chimaev, when he gets to your back, he will stick to you like glue. He's going to wrap up that body triangle. And once he gets to your back, it's a wrap. And it was a wrap for Robert Whitaker. Chimaev immediately got the face crank. Didn't break Whitaker's jaw because Whitaker confirmed it didn't break his jaw. But it did push his teeth inwards, which that's gnarly. That's freaking brutal. That shows how tight Kamzat squeezes. And uh, that's why Whitaker tapped as fast as he did. That's why he tapped as quickly as he did. At first, I was confused. I'm like, wait, is he tapping? It's over? But when he tapped, I'm like, okay, good. I got my prediction correct. I'm so happy I got my pick right. I was so happy I got that prediction correct. Um, and I'm glad I called it. I'm glad I called the round and the method because, look, I'm not the best at predicting fights. I'm very hit or miss and inconsistent. But whenever I make a prediction that hits and hits the exact way I say it will, it feels damn good, especially when it's a risky pick like Shimaya the Whitaker. And now Kamzat has proven he is the real deal. He is one of the best fighters in the world. For all we know, he could have been the best welterweight in the world when he was at 170. But, you know, his body kind of gave up on him in terms of being able to make the weight. Now he's a middleweight. But he could have simultaneously been the best of both weight classes, 170 and 185. I think all this time, he probably would have beaten Adesanya when he was champion. But he just wasn't in the title picture around that time. All this time, I think he would have finished Robert Whitaker and beaten everyone else at the top of the middleweight division. Had he have been in the middleweight title picture sooner, Chemaev may have been champion like by the time, like by 2022. Same thing with welterweight. If he 
stayed at welterweight and was consistent and didn't miss weight against Diaz, I think he was beating Leon Edwards relatively easily and would have beat Leon um, if that fight went down the times it was booked, but COVID saved Leon three times from getting face cranked by Kamzat Chemaev or, you know, Chemaev probably would have gotten under Leon's chin, honestly, but damn, how good is Kamaru Usman, bro? Usman, the exact same thing happened to Usman in the first round against Chimaev, and he survived. He survived the opening round, and he gave Chimaev hell in rounds two and three, and Robert Whitaker couldn't do that. That's just insane. Burns did better, but I guess that just shows how much Chimaev has improved. Um... I feel bad for Rob, though. I feel bad. I like Robert Whitaker. Who doesn't like Robert Whitaker? It always hurts to see him get finished, but at the same time, I'm happy about the outcome because I'm more interested in seeing Kamzat in the title picture um, in the middleweight division. I'd much rather see Kamzat versus DDP than Whitaker DDP, too, because I know Whitaker can make the adjustments. He can lock in more, but at the end of the day, what threat does Robert Whitaker pose to Drickus? He's more technical. So is everyone else. So is Izzy. And Izzy's better than Rob. And he couldn't he couldn't survive the fight. He couldn't avoid those bombs and couldn't help himself from getting subbed. I think Drickus would have still inevitably finished Robert Whitaker. It just might, might have taken longer this time. Um, but I don't think Robert was going to be the chosen one to stop DDP. I don't think it will be shot in a rematch. I mean, it's possible. But I think Hamzat Chimaev, if this man can get it together and stay active, stop fighting once a year, if he's ready to turn around at UFC 2 or 312 in, in Australia, I'm not sure if it's Sydney, Perth, wherever, if he's ready to fight in February in Australia against DDP, or I hope he's ready, I mean, and if he is, we have a fight on our hands and I cannot wait to see DDP versus Kamzat Chimaev. That's going to be a clash of the titans. It's a new, fresh, interesting matchup. And now Kamzat is the new star moving forward in middleweight. By Tuesday, he's going to be the number two contender. Although, I think he should be number one over Kamzat or Strickland because he had a more impressive win than Sean. Okay? He beat Robert in his prime and made easy work of him. Whereas Sean had a snooze fest, pitter patter, split decision boring performance, bore fest against Paulo Costa, who sucks. Who would you rather see fight Drikus Duplessis? Chemaev or Strickland? i rather see Kamzat fight him. I think that's so interesting because DDP, he's got that awkward style that works on everybody, but like Kamzat, he's a tank. Um, he's got the power to threaten Kamzat. We've seen Kamzat struggle with powerful fighters like Usman and Burns, and he struggled with fighters who do have some form of a ground game like Usman, who's got the wrestling, and Burns, who has the jiu-jitsu. Um, so I do think that Drickus could have a style. He could pose stylistic problems to Chemaev. He could stylistically be a nightmare matchup for Kamzat. He's got the BJJ, so he might not get smoked as easily on the ground. But on the flip side... Kamza is a really dangerous fight for Drickus because I've been saying for months if there's anyone who can straight up out wrestle DDP and dominate him on the ground, it's Kamzat Chimaev. And Kamzat could potentially finish Drickus Duplessis on the ground. And if Kamzat can work on his cardio and his pacing and he can't get an early finish but he doesn't gas, I don't know if Drickus is going to be able to beat Kamzat because the only way you're beating Chimaev is if you weather the early storm and then he gasses out and you're able to rally. But if you cannot finish, if you cannot, or I don't know, it's either you survive the first round against them or you don't. But if Shemaev is able to be dangerous every round, I don't know who's beating that guy. Because in the first round, he's unstoppable. If he can be like that every round, yeah, good luck beating that guy. But I hope that Chemaev gets the next shot. Please don't give Strickland the title shot, but even if they give Strickland the rematch, Chemaev shouldn't have to take another fight. Just wait for the winner of Strickland DDP2, and he'll probably maul and finish both. And thank God the Adesanya fight didn't happen when it was rumored, because imagine what Kamzat would have done to that boy. Um, but now, let's talk about the main event. Max Holloway versus uh, Ilya Taporia. Oh my gosh. 
<sighs> this fight was so sad, so depressing. My boy Max Holloway gets starched for the first time in his career. Um, and my analysis of this fight was terrible. Um, but I think a lot of that came from bias. When I initially thought of picking Max and I put it out there in my prediction video that I'm going for Holloway, it was a heart pick. But I've seen Taporia get challenged in fights by lesser fighters, apart from Volk. Volk is better than Max. But I'm thinking if these guys can do this to Ilya in the striking, Max Holloway should be able to as well. But because Max has a granite chin, he can sustain that success without getting knocked out. But that aged like milk. Um, although behind the scenes, I did kind of change my prediction to Taporia. I just didn't publicly announce it because if Max Holloway would have won the fight, I would have looked stupid for changing my pick again. So I just, I'm like, you know what? I think Ilya's probably winning, but I'm going to keep it a secret. But I hope Max wins so I can flex and say I picked Holloway. I basically played both sides with this fight, but ultimately I was rooting for Holloway to win. And I mean, I don't, he didn't do too horribly in this fight. I thought he was actually fighting a great fight against Ilya. He won the first round clearly, outstriking Taporia. I mean, outside that one takedown Ilya got, he did nothing with it. Max got back to his feet, um, was landing some good jabs, like I said he would. Um, and then like that last minute moment where it looked like Max got dropped, it was a slip. Ilya didn't drop him, so Max was fine. It was the second round where the fight started to kind of steer away from Holloway, although... <sighs> It kind of feels like Max won round two, but if I say that, people are going to call me stupid and biased, which I am biased. Not stupid, but I am biased in favor of Max. So maybe because I like Max so much, it was easy to watch that round and think Holloway, because he was doing good, he was winning the round. But Taporia, even though he got outlanded, he was landing the bigger, better shots. But I do think Holloway was starting to turn things around towards the end of that round. He landed a good... Did he land the elbow in round one? No, it was round one he landed the elbow. Never mind. But round two, he landed like a good straight cross on Taporia. He landed so many good strikes. I don't know why my memory is so blurred of this fight, even though I just finished watching it. I just remember the good moments Holloway had in that second round. Uh, he landed some pretty significant strikes in that round. Ilya started backing up, dropping his hands. To me, it just looked like Max was going to start turning the fight around, even though I knew he was getting knocked out. Because again, the day before, I had found out online that, yeah, Holloway got KO'd. So I didn't get my hopes up going into round three, but I thought, wow, Holloway looked good. And then round three happens. Ilya, I think what turned the tides of this fight is Ilya just stopped respecting Holloway. And the same thing happened against Volkanovski. He gave Volk respect. He was, you know, being technical. I mean, he was technical with his finish, but landing leg kicks from the outside, being patient, strategic. But then when it looked like the fight was pulling away from him against Volk, he just bull rushed him against the cage, blitzed him, and then knocked him out. Same thing happened with Max. It looked like Max start, was doing good. He wins the first round. Round two was competitive. Slight edge to Ilya because I guess he kind of wobbled him in the beginning of round two. But I don't know, Max, it feels like Max won round two, but whatever. They're 1-1 going into round three, but I thought to start round three, Max was looking great against Ilya. It looked like he was building. But with the success he was carrying in round three, I think he got a little too excited and a little too lazy with his defense and that led to him getting caught by the overhand right of Ilya Taporia which wobbled him but yeah like the Volk fight it looked like the fight was getting away from Ilya but then Ilya just crashes forward he's like screw it I'm not waiting I'm not respecting you I don't care how technical you are I don't care how good of a counter puncher you are I don't care how good your chin is well, we'll we'll see how good your chin is when you feel these hands, basically. And he just went forward, caught Max, wobbled him, um, and Max was backing up, covering up against the cage. Illy was landing nasty body shots, and that was the beginning of the end. And then Max Holloway gets caught circling out off the cage, which one way I did picture Max getting knocked out in this fight was exactly how it happened. Like Max Holloway getting wobbled first, backing up, and then getting caught circling. I think it was, was it a right hook? 
it feels like it was a shot from the opposite stance, so it might have been it might have been a left hook as Max was exiting. I, I gotta watch that fight again. I'm sorry if I'm like off with my take of this fight and how it went down. I'm trying my best. Um But yeah, no, great win for Toporia, man. He became the first man to knock out Max. Initially, I had thought though that if Ilya were to beat Holloway, I thought he'd beat him by decision. I didn't think that he was going to KO Max because I believed Max could never be KO'd. And I just didn't think Ilya would be the first man to do it. So I thought Taporia might win a decision throughout damaging Max and hurting him throughout the rounds, which we did see. But I did not think that he would just put him out cold, which he did. And that just shows how powerful Toporia is. And Sean O'Malley said it best, Toporia is like a mini Alex Pereira. It's like, you do not want to get hit by this guy, because once he lands that right hook, for Alex, it's the left hook, but once Ilya lands the right hook, or any hook, in fact, for that matter, it's game over. Um, but Ilya Taporia is going to be a hard man to beat for a long time. I'm sorry, Volkanovsky, you're getting chinned again. I don't want to see it, even though you deserve it. You're not getting any younger. I know you had time off, but I just, I don't know. I think Volk in a rematch could find more success than what he found in the last fight. He might last a bit longer, but in typical Ilya fashion, Ilya is going to get in Alex's face again, crowd him again, and he's going to clip him again like he did to Max. Max Holloway, I said at this point in their careers, Max was a tougher test for Ilya than Volk, which he kind of proved to be because he lasted longer. But Max is more durable than Volkanovsky, and he couldn't survive. So if Max, who's known for a granite chin, couldn't handle Ilya's power, imagine Volk again. Um, we're going to get that over with, and then I think Ilya will beat Volk and then move up to lightweight. And if Islam can stay the champion and doesn't move up to welterweight, imagine Makachev versus Taporia. And I think Ilya has a very solid chance against Makachev. He's got the wrestling the takedown defense, the BJJ, the boxing, the power. I mean, this guy is just, he's impressive. He's impressive. I knew he was the real deal when he put that five-round clinic against Josh Emmett, showed no signs of slowing down, showed amazing composure, amazing game planning and IQ. I'm like, this guy could definitely be a champ one day. I wasn't sure if he'd beat Volkanovski, and he did. I wasn't sure if he'd beat Holloway, and he did. And now that he's basically beaten the two once regarded best featherweights in the world, I just feel like, I don't know. I don't know who can test him. I think Diego Lopez could be an interesting challenge for um, Ilya Tapuri. I think he, I don't know. I want to say he could beat him, but he does pose a threat because he's got the power, the hand speed, the size, the height, and he's got good Brazilian jiu-jitsu. But I don't know if Dan Ige is rocking you in the third round and you're holding on for dear life in the third round. If if Ilya has you in that kind of, if he, ha if he puts you through that kind of adversity, He's finishing you, so I think Ilya wins that fight most likely, but <sighs> great win for Taporia, but it's depressing. It's a depressing outcome. Last night, or yesterday afternoon, was depressing. Seeing two of the most beloved fan favorites get steamrolled by the two of the scariest undefeated fighters in Kamzat and um, Ilya Taporia. Ilya is going to be champion for a long time, I think. He'll probably get at least three to four defenses, maybe five defenses before losing the title. Um, he could be double champ as well. I'm not going to doubt him. I'm not doubting him against Islam no more. I was wrong about Ilya. Everything I said in that Why Max Might Win video, all that criticism, I take that back. I take that back. Ilya is legit as they come. He passed this test. He beat the final boss in Max Holloway with full... And he test... Sorry. He passed the test with flying colors. And he eliminated the final boss. And now Ilya himself, he's the final boss. There are no more questions about how good this Ilya Taporia guy is. I felt like he needed this win. I felt like beating Max was more important than beating Volk twice. If he beat Volk twice... 
it wouldn't have been that impressive because Volk already got knocked out by Islam. There was already asterisks besides the first one. So we would all say that, okay, he just he KO'd a, a washed Volk twice in a row. But he beat Max. He beat a confident prime Max with momentum, which we've got to respect it. But, man, I wish Max Holloway won this fight. I wish he could have been a two-time champion, man. I've waited years for him to be champ again. I thought he beat Volk in the second fight and they robbed my boy. And now, years later, he has to get his light shut out. I, I think what's next for Max is I think he's got to go back to lightweight. And from here on out, it's only fun fights for now for Max Holloway. I think Holloway's done in terms of, you know, being a world champion or beating championship level fighters. But, you know, he can stick around like Gaethje and Poirier, have fun fights. I don't know who he would fight, though. I mean, he could fight the winner of Oliveira Chandler since he was in talks to fight Chandler before he could also rematch Oliveira I don't know but great card depressing outcome depressing main event but what can you do um but that's it for my reaction video let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below uh like and subscribe and peace out